If you're an MMA fan, you should be excited about this fight. And Matt, last weekend, we got everybody amped up about Jordan Williams and Nasruddin Imovov. Well, if that was our fight of the weekend that you have to watch, this is the fight of the upcoming weekend. Giga Chikadze, Omar Morales is a fight that's going to fly under the radar. And I see Matt giving me a weird look. But I there's reason to get excited about this one because you have Giga Chikadze coming out of King's MMA. In his last fight, he fought Erwin Rivera, who was coming in from Titan FC, moving up a weight class on very short notice. And Giga Chikadze got the win, and he turned his output up as the fight went on. It was a decent fight, and I guess there was a bit of a drop between the second and third. And Matt, I know that's something that we're going to kind of dive into a little bit later. And for Omar Morales, this is a guy that, coming in, he's an older guy. A lot of people were sleeping on him in his last fight against Gabriel Benitez. Both of these guys came the Contender Series route in a way, because for Giga Chikadze fought early on in the contender series, lost by submission to Austin Springer in a fight where he was having some success. He even had some success where I didn't think he would, maybe on the ground, he was going for submissions, but ultimately ended up getting submitted in the third round of that fight. For Omar Morales came in against Harvey Park, the former LFA lightweight champ, finished him, and then in his last two fights, a win over the maestro, Dun Hyun Ma, and after that, the win over Gabriel Benitez, who's a really tough fighter to look good against. I mean, a guy with whipping leg kicks, a guy fighting in a style that's very tough to try and get through to and, and really land a lot, with a lot of authority, and Omar Morales able to do that. So the striking from Hard Knocks 365 or Sanford MMA from Omar Morales, oh, by the way, now he has to defend the honor of his teammate, Erwin Rivera, Chikadze's last opponent. And for Giga Chikadze so far in the UFC, Matt, and I know this is what you're going to touch on, he's looked good, but we haven't really seen glimmers or, or glimpses of that glory kickboxer that we know in Giga Chikadze. And not every glory kickboxer is created equal like Israel Adesanya. So overall in this fight, I think it's very entertaining. Two primary strikers. you get got the boxing of Morales. you get the kickboxing of Giga Chikadze. Does it make for an interesting fight? It really does, but I do think we can simplify this fight to a certain degree. I think this fight is going to go kind of similar to the Rivera fight. It's just you have a much more skilled version of Urban Rivera and a much bigger version of him as well. Because we saw in the Rivera fight, he was much smaller than Shikadze, but he was able to push him backwards constantly. And Omar Morales, you know what his uh, style is. And let's be honest, his style at 155 is going to be his style at 145. It's not like we're going to see a drastic change out of him. Maybe his cardio could dip a little bit, but that would be the only thing I'd be worried about. But you know you're just going to get a lot of that forward pressure. Really good boxing combinations too. He's got a lot of power in both hands. He's not afraid to go to the body. But this fight is just going to be a lot of Omar Morales moving forward. And then I think it comes down to how could Jakaze respond to that forward movement? Can he start throwing those big knees like we saw against Rivera when Rivera would kind of duck in to try to close the distance? And then Jakaze, by the end of that fight, and it was something that he progressively got better at as the fight went on, was... Okay, I can time his ducks, I can time his head movement, and really make him pay for it. Kind of like in UFC 4, if you duck the wrong way, when you think like a right head kick's coming, and a left one comes, and you just get flatlined, even though you knock down your opponent seven times. I sound salty, because it happened last night. But, Chikadze is really going to have to make Omar pay for that forward movement. And, like you had mentioned, every video we do about Giga Chikadze, we mention his, his striking acumen, how he was a former glory kickboxer. He was a former glory kickboxer, but I think we might have to start downplaying that just a little bit because, like you mentioned, not every glory kickboxer is the same. We have some guys come into the UFC, like an Adesanya, of course, who they're just they're striking so much better than everyone else's. And of course, you can mention the whole glory thing. What you can't say, he's a really good striker, but he kind of waits and picks his moments. You'll see like three minutes of inactivity, and then he'll go really hard for 30 seconds, kind of see what he can do to his opponent if he can land some of those damaging shots, and then I'll kind of go back into his kind of downloading position again, if you will. He'll just kind of sit back, wait for, to see what his opponent does, and with the problem with Chikadze, that really low output does get him, it does... It bites him in fights because we've seen him. A lot of his wins are by split decision where he shouldn't really be going two decisions with these guys when you think about what his striking is able to do. I mean, Brandon Davis, you know what you're going to get. He's a tough guy. He's kind of good at everything. Chikaze should have blown him out of the water, but it was a really, really close fight just because Chikaze, he, does he doesn't have the highest output in the world and allows his opponents to kind of creep their way into the fight. So I do think this is a super fun fight. It's probably going to end in stoppage no matter which way it goes. I'm going to go in on that limb already because... Just the, st or the clash of styles, I should say, makes for that. It's either Morales walks into a massive shot of Chikadze, or he's able to walk him down, really make Giga work, and 
force him to go left and right. If you can get him up against the cage, you're going to really take away from that movement and that footwork that Chikaze is somewhat known for. And if you can push him up against the cage, Omar should be able to start landing with his boxing, but it's really that one or two. I don't see this being a competitive fight for both guys on the inside. I think it is going to be either Morales kind of goes out there, not steamrolls, but he goes out there, really gets his boxing, closes the range in this fight, and starts to put his hands on uh, Chikaze, or Chikaze is able to stay on the outside, kind of kick apart Morales as it continues. Now, I think it is a very, very close fight, and you kind of know sold something at the start that I wanted to delve into more, and it's the fact that a lot of people might not be familiar with this, but inside baseball, with fight night picks, when I do up the graphics, I put an asterisk next to somebody uh, if they've changed weight class, I don't change it if their country's changed or anything else, but if they've changed weight classes, I will do that. You can't see it under Omar Morales' right forearm, but there's an asterisk back there. Just believe me, because he's fought his career at 55. He's 34 years old, and now he's deciding to go down to featherweight. I worry about that a lot. Now, you might think that that's strange because he's only a couple years older than Chikadze. He's an inch shorter, but chikadze has been fighting at he's 45. Thin. He's just natural. And he's thinner, thin. so I don't worry about it as much. Whereas if you look at Omar Morales, not just in that picture, but go on to the IG where you're going to get IG bod. You're going to get, boy. yeah, you're going to get beach bod. Omar Morales carries around a fair bit of muscle. It is something of concern. And again, I mean, Matt, you talked about it in terms of output. Omar Morales, not so bad in the UFC. And like I said, Chikadze's kind of taken some, maybe not full rounds off, but he's taken minutes off in fights that I worry about. You can do that more in boxing and even kickboxing. You can't do that so much in the three, five-minute round fight that is a professional MMA fight, unless you're fighting in some weird spot where it's two fives or one five if it's an Invicta. A Phoenix ten and two fives? Or, or ten and two fives, I guess, but still... With Omar Morales, I worry about that a little bit. And in terms of the odds in this fight, I was actually surprised. Omar Morales opened a minus 135. Money dropped hot heavy on him very early on. He got as far as a minus 220. And then it shot back up in, by way of Chikadze. And at this point, Omar Morales sits a minus 145 favorite uh, or so. Now, you look at it for his opponent. And I mean, Matt, Giga Chikadze, maybe we haven't seen the best out of him so far. Open plus 115. He's now a plus 120. If we have a look over on Tapology to the total votes, 654 votes, 56% going with Omar Morales, 80% saying he's going to win by decision. I would think a lot more people would think maybe finish for Omar Morales if he can get in close. I know Giga Chikadze, it's not like he's getting knocked out in the UFC, but he hasn't really fought the same level of striker as an Omar Morales. I'm just so worried about this weight cut and the change in weight. This, and I say late, he's still young in his MMA career, 34 I, years yeah. old. But this late in age in your career to make that change, I do worry about it. I'm going to side with King's MMA's Giga Chikadze. Might not be the most confident pick. This is probably one of those fights where you just sit back, have a pop, a little bit of popcorn, enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going with Giga Chikadze in this one. I see where you're coming from, but I just think Omar Morales is going to be able to get it done. You look at him at 155, and yeah, he's a pretty thick dude, but when he fought Gabriel Benitez, a career 145er, he wasn't that much bigger than him. I mean, he was bigger, but barely like whatsoever he's slightly more muscular but frame wise he does match up with a lot of guys at 145 better than he does with the guys at 155 and i do think that is uh the cause for his weight drop is because at 155 what's the division dominated by either world-class strikers or really dominant wrestlers whereas in 145 it's a much more of a striker's division so i wouldn't worry as much about the weight cut for morales i do think his style is going to be pretty much the same i think the cardio is going to be there i think the output's going to be there and this could be one of those fights where I might agree with Craig. Chikadze might win by the end of it, but I do think the output is enough of a concern that Morales can, even if he's losing the rounds, he's landing a lot more strikes, so the judges might say he wins the round. So I'm going to say Morales by controversial decision. Matt going Morales. I'm going with Giga Chikadze. I'm really looking forward to this one, and we've got a great card oh, yeah. coming up. Lots of sleeper fights, but we've got a great main event at the top of the Bantamweight division. Aljamain Sterling's not going to like it, but you've got Marlon Moraes taking on Corey what Sandhagen. You're not going to want to miss that. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's get into it.